Well, good morning, everybody. I say good morning because it is about 8.45, I would say. Friday, February 19th, down in Spanish Fort, Alabama. It's a beautiful day today. Uh, it's supposed to get up to, uh, I believe we're going to just about touch 70 degrees today. And it's supposed to be a little bit overcast, but I don't mind that as long as the temperatures are up. So, uh, that's the good news. The bad news is, it's Friday, and it's a work day. So, um, unfortunately, this is not a uh, pleasure cruise. I have to get to the office. Um, I do a full day of work, but um, again, with this weather being like this, it's just uh, a great day to go for a ride. I think I take the bike into the office. And I, it's, this morning, it's, we're still in the, in the 50s. Um, I think it was like 52 when I left the house. And I was a little worried. Um, I thought I might get be cold, so I'm wearing my leather coat and my medium gloves. I did take the lining out of the leather coat. But then, um, when I go to work, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a fiasco because I've got to pack my computer in a backpack, I've got to get all my writing gear on. I don't know, it just takes a, it takes a little bit longer to get out the door. I had to inflate the tires on the bike. So while I'm doing all of that, wearing my <laughs> leather coat, you know, I start working up a sweat. And then I, I you know, you put that see it in your head that, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to be too warm in this, especially since it's only going to get warmer as the day wears on, uh, and I'm going to come be riding home in the afternoon, so, but I stuck with the coat, and then now, of course, as I pick up speed, I'm glad I did, because the wind is still cold, this morning, anyway, so I think I'm dressed perfectly for the weather. The other thing is, you know, when you are riding, when, you, when I take the motorcycle to work, I, I know this is like crazy, my, my kids always accuse me, I continue with the subject, you know, five minutes after everybody's done talking about it, out of the blue, I, I bring it up. So I'm doing that again. To pick up on an earlier conversation I was having uh, about, you know, the time it takes to get dressed to go to work on my bike. That's the one thing to keep in mind is when you do, and I read this somewhere uh, early on when I was still shopping for bikes and brushing up on some tutorials, and somebody said, you know, if you think you're going to get a motorcycle because it's going to be faster to get places, you can forget that because the reality is the extra time it takes to put your gear on to, you know, make sure your bike's ready, in my case, you know, checking the tires, which you should do every few days. Uh, warming the bike up just a few minutes before you take off. All of that stuff, um, it adds time. It's not like you just, you know, run outside, jump in the car, and zip out. So, don't for one minute think a reason for getting a motorcycle is to uh, make your, your trips faster. Because unless you're a squid and you don't wear any uh, equipment, the dumbest thing you can do on a motorcycle, you don't have any uh, gear on, uh, then you got to allow for some extra time. And even when I get home, you know, it, you got to, I mean, it sounds really trite when I say it, but once you get home, you got to take all your gear off, you maybe have to change your shirt, if it's really warm out and you sweat, you have to, you know, put everything away. So again, it's just an extra few minutes worth it, but uh, again, it's just things that take time. I might pick up some Jimmy John's for lunch. Tuttle! Tuttle! Tuttle!
this is this great old school and then it was I think it was like a hospital and they're re redoing the outside and then they're going to redo the inside it's really nice great building and here's a fun fact for you before they redid it, it had really fallen into disrepair and uh, what before they started uh, tackling the remodel or the rehab they shot a they filmed a uh, horror movie in there and uh, I, I don't even know what the name of the movie is but I was at work and all the set trucks were there and then it happened to be I was working late in the evening for a an event we had at the office and they were filming that night whatever this traumatic horror movie scene was so I thought that would have been really cool to watch them film the office so I almost almost left the house without my key this morning Okay, time to leave the office. And see if I can get some lunch at Jimmy John's. All right, we're gonna make two stops on the way home. The first one is I'm going to see if I can if I can find a parking spot. I'm going to grab some Jimmy John's, enjoy a sandwich at home. But I think it's probably unlikely I'm going to find a place to park. And then the second spot is a um, the bank. And actually, gas station too. I just do not want to go across the bay. I'm going the wrong way right now for home. I do not want to go across the bay with one bar on my tank. All right, this has been a complete cluster. I had to pull into the Walgreens because it's really windy now and I'm going to be heading across the bay and I want to I want to have my uh, earplugs in. So I didn't put them in earlier because I was hoping to go to Jimmy John's, which I did not do because, oh, green light, which I did not do because it was uh, too packed. Couldn't find a place to park. So, No, I'm just gonna. So then I'm out of gas. Got to come all the way into further into Mobile to get some gas. The gas station, which looks exactly like a Shell station, turns out it's not a Shell station. And then, and then I pull up to a pump, and the guy says, "Oh, it's more expensive there. That's full service." Full service. I didn't even know they did full service anymore. And I didn't, I don't know, I didn't see it marked. But then again, I thought it was Shell Station. So what the heck do I know? It was a comedy of errors. This is nice going down this street. I've not done this before. Really cool with trees. Next stop then, because I didn't even think I was going to have to come over here to do this stupid gas, my next stop will be the bank in Daphne across the bay. Let's get out of Mobile, shall we? Ooh, look at that wind. Them flags are flying.
dear life. I'm really bumming about that. Nice voice crack. I'm really uh, bumming about that. Jimmy John's sub though, that sandwich. I can taste that. I'm gonna have to make a lunch at home. Dog's funny. Yeah, it's beautiful. Just a deposit, please. Thank you very much. Will do. Thank you. That was my first bank drive-through on this bike. I've done it on an a older bike, whatever this one. So here's, here's a good story. So I had a... Uh, uh, Ninja 250, took it to the bank, went drive through. I think it was an ATM, I don't even know if it was a teller, and I made the mistake of shutting the bike off. And it was a mistake because it wouldn't turn on again. And uh, it turned out it was the battery. So I had uh, my wife come. I called her up, it wasn't too far from the house, uh, maybe 15 minutes. She came out, I assumed it was just the battery was dead somehow because I hadn't ridden the bike for a couple weeks, I don't know. So, I jumped the battery from the car, which, here's an interesting tidbit for you, in case you didn't know this, if you ever need to jump from a car to your motorcycle, it's, as far as you know, wiring and everything, it's the same using the jacks, but the difference is you don't have the car turned on. You just use the battery with the car engine off. So anyway, long story short, uh, or actually it's kind of long story long, isn't it? So I jumped the car or jump the bike, and it starts up, so I'm thinking, oh, great, no problem. Well, I ride about, I don't know, 20 feet, and I can't get the bike to go faster than about 10 miles per hour, and it's lurching, it keeps lurching back, forward, back, forward. So fortunately, you know, my wife is still there to make, because she even said, well, let me make sure and follow behind you to make sure it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, the battery doesn't die again. Well, it, it's not dying, but uh, the motorcycle's lurching. I'm still in a parking lot area trying to figure out what's going on. I can't get it to do anything except lurch. So what I, and, and I had to go a road that was like the speed limit, I think was 55. So. Uh, my wife followed me the whole way home with her flashers on. I think I got the bike up to about 25 at one point, but all the time lurching. And I'm hanging on for dear life because it's like a, a Bakken Bronco. You know, it's going stop, start, stop, like jerking. Like my head is whip lashing back as the bike is uh, jerking. Um, so I get home, jump online to do my Google searches to figure out what's wrong. It turns out a motorcycle battery doesn't just isn't there just to start and run the electronics but it keeps the flow the acceleration like smooth um, and I can't remember what you know the technical thing that it does but it basically keeps everything flowing smoothly and without the battery you get the jerking so uh, my battery was dead and it wasn't, you know, it was unable to have a charge. So all I did was um, order a new battery. And um, I, I mean, I think I went and picked one up somewhere, put that in, and then the bike was right as rain. It was like nothing had happened. So if you ever experience uh, that battery problem on your bike, where it starts lurching, it's 
it's the uh, it's almost like a serpentine bell. I you know I had that go out on a car once. It was the same thing. The car just wouldn't go fast, and every it screws up everything inside. All clear. All right, well, I am nearly home. I'm going to have to make myself a sandwich. i got more work to do yet at the home office. Got my son to pick up later at school. And uh, so it's been a successful day. Thanks, everybody, for joining me on this uh, day of errands and work at the office. And uh, I hope you watch... Uh, enjoy my videos keep watching subscribe and uh, if you have any questions or requests let me know uh, for now I say adios